12 ne mumul kitaba he teaches you the sharia and he teaches you hikmah major difference major difference before we were saying he teaches uh, he recites upon you ayah he purifies you and he uh, he teaches you the book and he teaches you hikmah right and he teaches you the uh, the quran and he teaches you sunnah that was the conventional translation that we we read and how everything has fallen into place yuzakki him is the is the purpose we'll talk a little bit more about this huwallazi basa fil ummin rasulam minhum yatlu alaihim he recites upon them that's a little bit weird way to say things it just what it means is that the prophet sallallahu is in making stuff up he is saying things what has been revealed onto him he is just reciting them on to the people okay so that's what that means so who brought the religion to us the prophets we got the religion from the prophets okay what is the religion that was brought to, to us by the prophet all prophets prophet ibrahim brought islam prophet isa alaihi salam brought islam prophet musa alaihi salam brought islam what is the content of that religion what is the content what are the things that you will say this is component a of the religion this is component b of the religion kitab and hikmah that's what we have discussed kitab and hikmah those are the two components what does that mean that means law we have given you sharia and we have taught you hikmah we have taught you iman and akhlaq and what is the purpose of this what is the purpose of this so we can purify you so we can purify you purification means to remove your impurities to clean you up and then nurture whatever is good in you the purpose of the religion is to purify people's personal and communal lives my personal life should be devoid of any impurities and i should nurture my goodness my communal life as in a community should be free of any impurities and we should nurture goodness in our community that is the purpose that's why in the quran when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in one word how you would get success in one word he says kad aflaha man tazakka the purpose of the religion is to get purification okay the purpose of the religion is to get purification allah wa nafsin wa ma sawaha wa falha maha fujuraha wa taqwaha whoever purified his soul he succeeded purification is the purpose of the religion wa kad khaba man da sa'in who corrupts it who is doomed he is doomed who corrupts this okay now the question is where do you get this law and where do you get this hikma and that question is very easy we get it from the quran and we get it from the sunna the content of the religion is two we get sharia law and we get hikma we get the uh, iman and akhlaq morality ethics we get that and where do you get it the law is in the quran and it is also in the sunna which is the way of the prophets all prophets okay and where is hikma hikma is in the quran and it is also in the sunna okay it's also in the sunna so this is the first paragraph we are almost at the end of our uh, of our presentation thank you for bearing me 10 more more minutes we'll be done in 2 minutes this is the first page of where i want you to read from the islamic comprehensive introduction um, by javed ahmed ghamdi and let's read this religion is the guidance which has which was first inspired by the almighty in human nature and after that it was given by him with all its essential details to mankind through his prophets the prophets give uh, this to us okay muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the last of these prophets never make the mistake of thinking that islam began with the prophet muhammad no it be began with the first prophet they all had the same message they all had the same they were all given the same thing remember that okay we talked about the difference between uh, a rasul and uh, and uh, nabi before okay it is only consequently it is now he alone who alone the prophet alone who in this world is the sole source of knowledge the prophet is the one who was revealed on to quran it's not like the prophet came and somebody else got the book right right okay so he the prophet is the sole source of the religion it is only through him that a man can receive divine guidance and it is only he who through his words his deeds 
and tacit approval had the authority to regard something as a part of Islam until the day of judgment. Okay? Not everything that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did is a part of the Islam. Remember this. Not everything. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also a human being. Just like you and me, he had some things he liked. Just like you and I like things. So we have to make sure that when we say this is a part of the religion, we have to see if Prophet ﷺ declared it as a part of the religion. We have to look at that evidence. Just because you will read on Facebook that Prophet ﷺ loved to eat kadu, or Prophet ﷺ loved to uh, aftar his rozas with date does not make it a part of the religion. It's an important distinction. Prophet ﷺ, through his approval, through his statements, through his actions will have to tell us that yes, this is a part of the religion. And he has done that clearly because this was his job. This was his job, Prophet Sallallahu job, okay? So does that make sense? Let's translate this ayah in other places. Remember, Ibrahim Alayhi made this dua. He made this dua uh, 4,000 years ago when he left, uh, or when he was with uh, Hazrat Ismail Alayhi in Mecca. What did he say? Rabbana, O Lord, wabas fihim rasulam minhum. Send down a messenger to them, amongst them. What will he do? Yatlu alayhim ayatika. He will recite upon them your ayah. Wa yuallimu umul kitab. And he will tell them, or he will teach them the law. Wal hikmah. And he will teach them hikmah. Wa yuzakkihim. And thus, and by teaching them hikmah, by teaching them the law, what will he do? He will purify them. How do you achieve purification? By following the law, by following the hikmah. Does that make sense? You can't achieve a third way. You can't come to me in Tucson. Oh, I have, achieved, I have figured out this beautiful method of purification. I don't need this method that you're describing. No, in Islam, if you want to achieve purification, it will be done. And the way Prophet ﷺ did it is, how? Yuallimuhumul kitab wal hikmah. Okay? So those are the two things. Now let's look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Bani Israel. These are the people who before us got the book. They were the children of, uh, of Ibrahim alayhi What did Allah tell them? Okay? He said, Kamar salna fikum rasulam minkum. Just like. We uh, just uh, uh, just like we sent amongst you the prophets yatlu alaykum ayatena who would recite to you our ayas and they would purify you and in order to do so how would he achieve this for this purpose he will teach you the book the book is the law and he will teach you hikmah okay all right, and I'll, I'll just let you guys do the other one on your own. That's totally fine. So, it is this Sharia, it is this Sharia, this law and this hikmah, which is the true religion which is termed as Islam. If somebody asks you, what is Islam? All right? In the deen, in the Allah, Islam. What is that Islam? That Islam is Sharia and hikmah. When Allah describes it by one word, what is it? It is Islam. If somebody were to follow Islam, they will need to follow the law and they will need to follow the hikmah. Okay? All right. And then, how did we get it? Fine. We found that Allah revealed hikmah, Allah revealed law. How did you and I get it? Right? How did the companions of the Prophet ﷺ got it? The source of this religion is the Prophet ﷺ, from whom it has been given to the ummah through the consensus of the companions and through their perpetual practice and perpetual recitation in two forms. You and I got this from Quran and from Sunnah. Okay? So if you want to look for law, you will look at Quran and Sunnah. If you want to find hikmah, you will have to look for Quran and Sunnah. The conclusion, who brought this religion to us? The prophets. 
If I were to ask you what is the content of this religion, you should never be ever confused about this. What is the content of this religion? The law, the kitab, okay? And hikmah, the wisdom, the celestial wisdom. What is that wisdom? It is iman, the belief. And, and what else? It's the morality, the ethics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught, which is, which is the basis of the law, by the way. And what is the purpose of this? The purpose is to purify you. That's the purpose of this. And how did we get this religion? We got this religion through the... Uh, how did we get this content? We got this through the Quran and the Sunnah. All right? That is the essence of my talk. For the last three sessions, this is the concluding. I really appreciate you guys hanging out for 15 more minutes. And I really apologize for going over time. I'm happy to take questions. And then we are done. Can I ask, can you go to the last slide? Please? So... The ikhlaq or the morality, iman plus ikhlaq. So the other religions also have the morality, you know, which we say Christianity and Judaism and all yeah. things. Yes. They also have a law. That is correct. The, the Torah and the angel. So is this the iman part that is missing in their religion, which is part of our or Islam, or they miss the the that part? The Iman part, and that's why they are different religions. Excellent question. The question that Brother Robert asked is just for the purpose of the audience: is that what is so special about the religion that we have today versus the religion that were there before us, like Christianity and the Judaism? Was it that they were not given a particular thing, and we were given both things? That is not true. The prophets and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said this in this beautiful ayah this was the ayahs that was to previous allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the previous ayah a previous rasul previous prophets he says why is akhazallahu misakan nabiyyin when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a covenant he took a promise from the prophets what did he say lama ataitukum min al kitab wal hikma that now that i have given you the law and hikma summa ja'akum rasulun musaddiqan lima ma'akum that when a future prophet comes to you, who actually will confirm what you have, la tu'minunna bihi wa la So then you will, what will you do? You must believe in him and you must support him. All the prophets were given these two things. They were given the hikmah and they were given the kitab. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the case of Bani Ismail, Israel, he would send Nabi, he would send prophets to uh, because they had forgotten a lot of these rules and a lot of the hikmah and a lot of the things so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep sending them to remind them of, of what they need but all the prophets had the same content okay? the content has been always the same it's not that to previous generations of prophets Allah gave them just hikmah or they only gave them kitab that's not true they were all given the same thing Excellent question. Any other questions? So that means we have to remind each other about the kitab and something. So if you want to remind people about the religion, you have to remind them about, if you want to pur you will have to pur you want to purify them, you will have to purify them through the law and you will have to purify them through the hikmah. Now when you talk about reminding, you are actually talking about dawa. Now dawa etiquettes we are going to talk about. That's a big portion of our syllabus, our curriculum. We're going to talk extensively about how that is done. How did the prophets do it? How is the Quran and the Sunnah teaching us how to do it? That's going to be a big topic. Next time, just to keep you guys in a cliffhanger, we are going to discuss this thing, which is how did you and I get it from the Prophet ﷺ and why are we so sure about it? That we actually got it. Allah said that I have taken, um, I am the protector of this Quran, right? So how did we get it? How did we actually get Sunnah? This way of the Prophets, how did we get it? Okay, that's going to be something that we're going to be talking a lot about, which is uh, Ijma and Tawatur, okay? So that's going to be our next set of objectives. Oh, I have to convince you, I have to tell you, 
uh, of, of how that happens. Uh, Jazakallah khair. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your attention. And I'll next time, next week, there is Eid afterwards, and I'm out of town, so there will not be any halakha. But the week after that, I believe that's the 25th, um, we will inshallah have halakha. Okay? Assalamu alaikum.